What's up you guys, it is Jag, back filming another video for you guys. So, this is going to be another story time video on this channel. I haven't made a story time video in quite some time. This is going to be a dating story time video about the time that I dated a personal trainer, a gay personal trainer. It was a great experience. I hope you all enjoy it. But anyway, the reason that I make these story time videos, believe it or not, it's not for views. It's not for money because I don't even get out of revenue to begin with. It's because every dating experience that I have, I kind of take something away from it and there's always kind of like a moral or something that I learned from it. So if I can give you guys any advice and you guys can learn from my mistakes, that is great. So we're just gonna get right into the story time. Like I said, this is the story time of the time that I dated a gay personal trainer. This was last year. And let me just say, this is gonna be very different from my other story time videos involving dating because for the first time, for the first time ever, I actually dumped the other person. Normally, I'm the one who gets left in the dust and then I come on here and I bitch about it. But for the first time ever, I took control. I was a fucking man about it. I manned up and I actually ended a relationship that was toxic in my life and kind of dragging me down. So I'm just saying that because normally when I make story time videos, people are like, oh my God, Jack, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that dating is so hard. I'm sure it fucks you up. I don't want to see any comments like that. What I want to see, I want to see comments of people being like, you, yes, Jack, for once you did something healthy and you did the right thing and you left that fucking bitch. That's what I want to see in the comment section below. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video, guys. <laughs> you guys so this happened last year um, I matched with a person on tinder and let me just say I think the reason that I wasn't devastated by this is because last year was kind of a very big turning point with me in regard to gaining back confidence I, re I went through a very low low I started working out I kind of I, I kind of realized that I am in control of myself and nothing else around me and I built myself back up from being in a very bad place so I feel like that's why I was in a good space to date again and I feel like that that's why I'm dealing with dating nowadays in a much more healthy way, okay? Anyway, I matched with this guy on Tinder. This guy was beautiful. He had a great body. Obviously, he was a personal trainer. I didn't know it at the time, but I thought he was a very, very good-looking, handsome guy. Anyway, it became time to plan our first ever date, and I was in charge of it, and I planned this bar called Sassafras. So we got a few drinks at Sassafras. It's in Hollywood. It's this, like, New Orleans-themed bar. Anyway, pat on the back. I planned some good dates. Uh, my gay mind. My gay mind is so powerful. It's not a force to be reckoned with. So that was date number one, okay? And did I love him after date number one? No. Did I hate him after date number one? No. I didn't really know how I felt, but I feel like the bar's set so low on date number one, if you don't want to stab the other person, you might as well hang out again. So, that's what we ended up doing. We went on date number two. We saw The Grinch. I did not like this Grinch remake. I'm not even getting into that. But anyway, we saw a movie, and we ate at Yard House. That was date number two. And then, date number three came around, and this is where... I started feeling a little bit weird because I realized me and him were very, very different people. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes opposites attract, but when we were planning date number three, I was, I, it's not like I was a buzzkill, I was kind of shooting down his ideas because date number three to me is like, I'm still getting to know you, okay? I want an intimate setting. I want to be alone with you in my apartment, in your apartment, at a restaurant, seeing a movie. He kept suggesting... Let's go clubbing. Let's go to a rave. Like, he wanted me to go to some rave with him and his co-worker or something like that. And I was like, I literally would rather honestly drown myself in a lake. Anyway, we eventually settled on a gym date, which you guys, I don't think it's a great date because I'm not looking for a gym buddy. I'm looking for like a partner in life, not a gym partner, a partner who, I don't know. It's, you know, you guys, I feel like you guys know what I mean. Like, going to the gym is a little bit weird for a third date, but anyway, I agreed to do it because I had shot down every <laughs> every idea he had prior to that. So, we met at LA Fitness, which is my gym. Woo! Yeah, not sponsored. But anyway, we met at LA Fitness and we started working out, and this was when I realized even further that we were very compatible because, you guys, I thought it was just gonna be like a, woo, I'm lifting some shit here. Doesn't matter how much it is. 
So, like, wh how was your day? Did you have a good, like, I thought we were gonna be talking. And I understand this guy was a personal trainer, and maybe it was my fault for kind of underestimating how serious he'd take it, but we went to the gym. I was expecting it to be kind of fun, kind of relaxed, kind of chill. <laughs> It was like he was a fucking drill sergeant. Like, it was like very intense. First of all, he was asking me where everything was. He was like, do you have a, tr a tri per per pectoral press in here? And I was like, I don't fucking know even what that is. So I, I don't know, that was kind of weird. Also, like I said, I was expecting it to be a chill workout. He was timing his shit, like timing his workout. I understand why people do that, but it was all a little bit intense for me. I'm trying to get to know him. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not training for uh, the Iron Man over here. I'm not training for a triathlon, okay? So that was a little bit weird, and it was kind of like a bump in the road. But date number four was fine. We ended up just going to his apartment, and we watched scary movies, and we had, like, popcorn. And we got Wendy's. So that was date number four. And then date number five was we went to the observatory. If you've never been to L.A., this is the observatory, and you just kind of, like, look out at L.A. And it's really cute. It's, like, really romantic. You can have a good time. They have, like, a planetarium there that no one goes to because no one gives a fuck about knowledge. But it's just like a cute, adventurous little date thing to do. So that's what we did for date number five. And then there was no date number six. <laughs> We're going to get into that in a second. But anyway, after date number five, things started getting weird. The gay dating curse setting. In the gay community, a lot of gay men, from my experience, kind of seek out excitement and thrills and they want to get to know you and they want to sleep with you. And then the second they do all those things, they kind of like put you on the back burner and like two weeks will go by and they won't talk to you, but they'll like your Instagram picture. And then they'll slide into your DMs in two months and say, oh, let's go on a date. I don't know what happened. It's like everyone's talking to each other, but it's not about anything important or substantial. So anyway, that kind of set in. The thrill of getting to know each other kind of faded and it got replaced with comfort, which is what happens in long-term relationships. But anyway, that shift happened and because of that, we weren't talking as frequently, which I am fine with. I have my own life. I am an introvert. I need my space. I need my alone time. So if you really take an hour, two hours, three hours to respond to my text, I'm fine with that. But there is a limit. Taking nine hours to respond to a text, 10 hours, 11 hours, to me that's unacceptable. It's like either end the relationship because it's not what you want, or put in the needed effort to sustain it. Like, enough with this half in, half out bullshit. I'm not saying we need to run to the fucking down, go into the chapel and we're gonna get mad. Like, I don't wanna marry you, but I should feel a connection with you that's stronger than, you know, say, my last Uber driver. Like, I shouldn't feel like I know strangers better than I know you. You know what I mean? So anyway, he started taking a very, very long time to respond to texts. And I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, he didn't respond for 10 hours. I'm pulling out. Like, I will be patient. So I understand that people are busy. I, and I give people space. I will gladly give you space if I know you're busy. It's just a problem when it becomes a pattern and it becomes this trend where every day you're taking 10 hours to respond to my text, you're going to bed and then not saying anything and then randomly responding at 5 p.m. the next day. Like, it's just, that's a lot, okay? And that's what he started doing. That happened for almost a week, like seven whole days of that. Seven whole fucking days. Eventually I confronted him, which Pat on the... <laughs> I feel like back in the day I never would have done that because I didn't want to seem needy, I didn't want to seem dramatic, I didn't want to be combative. But this day and age, I have no problem anymore confronting people and communicating my feelings because, hello, I'm not six anymore and I know how to communicate the way I'm feeling. I think it's important to do that. So I told him, I was like, listen, I don't know if this way of communicating works for you, but it doesn't work for me, and I enjoyed our time together. I thought you were, you know, a very nice guy. No hard feelings, but if this is the way we're gonna continue to communicate, I need to, I'm, you know, I'm backing out of this. Immediately, I got a text from him, and it was like, oh my god, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to leave you on red for so long. I guess I just lost track of time. I've just been so busy lately. I don't want you to think I don't want to get to know you. I definitely do. I want to keep dating you. And when I read that, I was just kind of like, like, I'm not, do you think I'm a fool? Like, I, boys and their excuses, like, I just can't. There's always an excuse, like, oh my god, my watch broke, I lost my phone in, in a, in a, um, in a bog, I, 
my dog ate my homework. Like, it's all these shitty excuses. I really don't care. Either you want to talk to me or you don't. But anyway, after I had confronted him, he kind of changed, like, did this, like, 180. Where all of a sudden his responses were, like, very quick. He was responding with, like, very lively answers. He was being very fun. It was good. It was good for... 45 minutes? Was that how long it was? Like, he changed his attitude for 45 minutes, and then, all of a sudden, crickets. 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 Do you know how long it took him to respond to my text? He sent a nice little, like, haha, yeah, emoji text, which is garbage to begin with, but he sent that response... 19 whole fucking hours later. 19 hours. Where were you for 19 hours? Were you lost? Were you kidnapped? Were you on in a coma? Where, did you fall down the stairs and you're trying to... Where's my life alert? Like, where were you? Were you trapped in the sewers? Like, what? Why, where were you? What could possibly have had you so busy for 19 hours? So... I didn't respond to him because I was like, this is, I, I confronted you, I told you how I felt. There's nothing more that I can do. I'm just taking myself, I'm just walking away from the situation. I'm keeping my head up high. I'm gonna be zen about this. I'm not gonna get riled up. I'm not gonna give you a reaction. I'm just gonna meditate. I'm gonna fucking meditate over here and just ignore the situation. Not trying to be spiteful, not trying to not give you closure. It's just, we are not gonna give each other what each other wants. So it's futile. It's futile. Okay, so anyway, I didn't respond. Of course, since boys are fucking stupid, he double texted me and I was like, I'm not gonna fucking respond. Remember, Zen, meditate, deep breaths. He texted me a third time. And the thing is, I, again, like I didn't want to be spiteful. It clearly, he wanted to know what was going on. So I was like, listen, I, I, I really don't think this is going to work out. I just feel like we're on different pages. I think we're at different, you know, points in our lives. I just really don't think it's going to work out. I'm so sorry. It was like literally I was being ASMR. I was being ASMR over text. And he gets mad and he's like, I told you I was busy. I was, I have my, I'm a busy, busy bee bumblebee. Like, I don't give a fuck. Long story short, we had a brief exchange that was very not, you know, ad friendly. It was very not Roman Catholic. There were some, there were some arguing back and forth, and we are no longer on speaking terms, so. <laughs> However, I will say, I left that exchange, I left that confrontation feeling great about myself. The power that I felt in my veins, because I was just really proud of myself. I feel like back in the day, since I had lower self-esteem back in the day, I was willing to stick around. Because if a guy even was giving me, you know, some attention and he had a great body and he seemed really kind and he seemed like the type of guy that I had compatibility with, I would give him the benefit of the doubt and I would, I would stay because I didn't want to be the guy that ended it because then that was on me and I would be left with the what ifs. Not anymore. I don't have, I can't, I can't do it. I don't care how good he looks without a shirt on. I don't care how tan he is. I don't care how many people he fucking personally trained at his damn gym. If he isn't giving me what I want, I have to leave, okay? And I think you guys should all know your self-worth in a relationship. It feels great when you're finally confident and you finally feel good about yourself and you're entering relationships. You are a thousand percent more likely to be successful just because you're not gonna accept bullshit, okay? Because I believe that you set the tone of your relationship. And if you communicate early on in a relationship that you're not comfortable with something or something isn't working for you and that guy doesn't change his tune or his actions at all and you accept that and stay with him, you are setting yourself up for a relationship filled with compromise on your end, okay? You are sending a signal to him that it doesn't matter what you think or what you're uncomfortable with. Even if he doesn't change, you're gonna stay with him and that is not a good foundation to build a relationship on. So have enough self-worth. If a guy isn't giving you what you want, you leave that relationship. Don't be a bitch about it. Don't be salty about it. Don't be spiteful about it. Be mature about it and communicate to him. Be like, listen, you're a nice guy, but you're not giving me what I need in a relationship, so I have to leave. I have to remove myself from the situation, you fucking bitch! Except don't say it like that. But anyway, do that. Remove yourself from the situation. You will feel a thousand times better. Just know your self-worth, okay? And that is all for this story time video. I, I hope it's not too preachy. 
Like, I, I'm not Jesus Christ over here preaching on a hill, I swear to God. I hope it didn't come across that way. But anyway, I want you guys to just be in happy relationships. I love you guys so, so much. Comment below with your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will link below two other videos by me. Last week's video, I did a track video with Travis where we had a gay, cute, stupid slumber party. That will be linked below. And I will link below the video I did the week before. It was a mukbang. I made a whole meal. I tried to be a house husband for the day, and I made a meal, and I ate it. And I rated it. And yeah, that will also be linked below. I love you guys so, so much. Follow me on Twitter, official.com. Instagram is jmeridu. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. How many times am I going to fucking say that? And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.